Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so glad that you got your back, backpacks blessed. You know, in church the last few weeks, you've been talking about bread, a lot about bread, because there's been a lot in the readings about bread, because Jesus talks about himself being bread. And so I wonder, does anyone have a favorite kind of bread? What's your favorite kind? Normal bread. Okay. <laughs> Banana bread. Banana bread. Ooh. Your dad's bread. What else? Biscuits. Baguettes. Blueberry bread. So many good breads. Well, I have a, a flat, crispy bread to give out to everyone today. A flat, crispy bread. And I'm going to say this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. What does this sound like when I say this? Something else we do in church. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. Whoop. This is for you. What else does that sound like when I say that? This is for you. Something we do in church every week. Sounds like the sermon. This is for you. <laughs> she must have been here already. This is for you. This is for you. It's something we do every week. When you get something also that it looks like a little tiny piece of bread, what is that? The communion, right. And what do we... Oh, cool. Very cool. Five minutes. I can't last longer than five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so when we say, when we receive communion, what do we hear somebody saying to us? This is the body of Christ given for you, right? It's a piece of bread but we call it the body of Christ. And Jesus tells us in today's reading that somehow his body is going to feed us and it's going to give us everything we need. And you know, Jesus, we know, is always with us. When we take communion, he comes inside of us as well. So he is always with us, giving us everything we need. And so when we have bread... Every time we eat some bread, we can also remember that Jesus is with us. And then when we come up for special bread that we get, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for giving us your son, who is the bread of life. Help us to be kind to everyone we meet and remind them that they too are loved by Jesus. Amen. Good morning. It is a joy to be with you again on this season of bread uh, in the gospel. And I know that your pastors appreciate not having to preach, preach it every Sunday. For <laughs> it's always great to get a guest preacher in the bread series. Well, on behalf of the Southwestern Texas Synod, I bring you greetings. And I give thanks to God for you and for your partnership in the gospel. You have continued to make God's love real here in this place for almost 45 years. And I am so grateful for your witness. And I want to thank you for your generous sharing of mission support with the wider church. Your gifts enable us to care for and develop leaders, equip and resource congregations, support and explore new ministries on our territory, and coordinate synod-wide justice work. And I'm also grateful for you sharing some of your leaders with us, Pastor Steve and Pastor Heather, Deacon John and Johnny, and I saw to all serve in some capacity in our synod leadership, and we are so grateful. We are so much better together than we could ever be apart. What is your favorite kind of bread? White, wheat, sourdough, rye, multigrain? Do you like it smooth or nutty, with or without the crusts? What about some fancier kinds of bread, like brioche and panettone and focaccia and pretzel bread and Irish soda bread and ciabatta and pita and baguettes and naan and cornbread and challah? And the list goes on. How many of you here bake bread? Any of you? A few. Yeah. There's something marvelous about the smell of baking bread, isn't there? 
Now, no matter what kind of bread, when I smell it baking, I'm like Pavlov's dog. I start to salivate, and I can't wait for it to come out of the oven and to cut off a huge slice and lather it with butter. Maybe you like that as well. And there's some form of bread or pan, brot, kleb, pau, brud, in pretty much every culture around the world. It's a ubiquitous staple that stands alone and is also great when it's combined with other foods or toppings. And if you think about a loaf of bread, it's meant to be shared, right? Most people can't eat a whole loaf in one sitting, unless, of course, you have an adolescent in your household. And the term breaking bread is used not just to talk about physically eating with one another, but the act of hospitality, connection, relationship building. There's an intimacy to breaking bread together, to sharing a meal. It is an act of getting closer to the people who are around the table with us. So bread can satisfy not only physical, but also emotional needs. And it's often a symbolic act, breaking bread together of peace, forgiveness, reconciliation. So the simple ingredients of flour, water, yeast, and salt combine to produce something that has extraordinary impacts. And here's Jesus in today's gospel reading, describing himself as the living bread that comes down from heaven, the bread that allows us to live forever. Sounds pretty amazing, right? As much as regular bread is a gift with extraordinary impacts, it's nothing compared to the gifts that Jesus brings. Jesus himself brings peace, reconciliation, forgiveness. He himself builds relationships. He himself fills the hungry with good things, as we hear in Mary's song. Jesus provides everything that we need, including eternal life. And just like that bread which has to be broken open to partake of all its benefits, so too Jesus' life was broken, given, so that we might live. We hear this every week when we take communion, right? This is the body of Christ, given or broken for you. Now just a word about what we say in really churchy language is the atonement theory, or... Why did Jesus have to die, and especially in that way? Because when you think about it, there could have been a lot of other ways that God could have chosen to save us that would not have involved his only son being tortured and dying a slow and painful death on a cross. I mean, if I were God, I might have just used my powers to set everything right from a distance speaking redemption and recreation. After all, God created the world and all that was in it simply by declaring it so, right? But thankfully for all of us, I'm not God. And there have been a lot of theories over the last two millennia about why it is that Jesus had to die, including things like Humanity is held captive by sin and death, and Jesus is the ransom payment to Satan to get us out. Or Jesus won the war against evil, setting us free. Or Jesus' sacrifice made things right with God, allowing God to forgive us. Or even though we deserve punishment for sin, Jesus takes on our punishment and dies in our place. But for me, Jesus' death underscores the depths that God is willing to go to, to understand and to participate in our own humanity and suffering, even to the point of being willing to accept an unjust death based on wrongful charges. 
this is how much God loves us and stands in solidarity with us, no matter what we're going through. This is the living bread God offers us, full of love, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, sacrifice. And Jesus says, you need to take me into yourself to really experience that fully. There's an intimacy in that, isn't there? Jesus isn't keeping a distance from us. He's telling us to get up close and personal so that there's nothing separating us from him. And there's a generosity in this. Jesus gives his whole self to us. It reminds me of an old joke about a pig and a chicken walking down the road together. And the chicken says, hey pig, let's open a restaurant together. And the pig says, sounds good, what should we call it? And the chicken suggests, how about ham and eggs? And the pig hesitates and says, on second thought, no thanks. You'd only be involved, but I'd be committed. Jesus shows his absolute commitment to us in this act of giving himself. This living bread of love, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, generosity, and sacrifice shows us the heart of God and what God values the most. My friends, these beautiful values of God are so amazing, and they're so counter to the values that we often see in our world. The world tries to tell us that the one with the most weapons wins and that we should take vengeance on those who wrong us. The world tries to tell us that we should value people based on what they can produce or consume or control. The world tries to tell us that there's not enough of anything to go around, and so we have to hold tight to all that we've got. This bread of life reminds us that in God's world, we can and do and will live differently. Once Jesus returns, God's values will be all there are. And in the meantime, we who have been baptized into Christ, the living bread, we get to start living these values right now. Do you remember what we say when someone is baptized? I know Pastor Steve and Pastor Heather do. They say it a lot. We say, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Here we are, part of the body of Christ, the living bread that comes down from heaven. In some mysterious way, we too become this bread of life for others. So we get to share these God values of love, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation, abundance, and yes, even suffering with others. Because we already have all that we need in this bread from heaven. You do this as individuals when you choose to forgive someone rather than hold a grudge, or when you invite someone who is lonely over for a meal, or you care for children or aging parents, or you stick up for someone who's being bullied or excluded. You do this together as a congregation, part of the body of Christ, when you walk with one another in crisis when you build ramps and homes and wells, when you serve meals and volunteer at places like Haven for Hope, you too are that living bread. And we do this together as a synod. We built 50 disaster buckets this year at Assembly, and we raised so far almost $55,000 to help our neighbors with Lutheran disaster response. We do this as a synod when we accompany congregations and leaders through life passages such as call processes, and when we develop new leaders as proclaimers of the good news of Jesus. We do this with our border ministry, Eagle Pass Frontera Ministries, that welcome asylum seekers as they come across, 
and Technicolor Ministries, where we reach out and welcome LGBTQIA plus persons who have often been rejected by others. And we do this as part of the larger church, the ELCA, when we gather young people together in New Orleans at the National Youth Gathering, and when we send young adults out in global settings for a year so that they can experience the unconditional love and acceptance of Jesus And God can stir them up to be a greater part of God's mission. This bread from heaven gives us all that we need to feed others with the love, grace, mercy that we ourselves have received from God. And when we receive this bread of life at the Lord's table, as we will shortly, we will be strengthened once again so that we can continue to be the body of Christ the bread of life, for the sake of the world God loves. Amen.